Hello, I'm Patrick Wannis. For many years, I was teaching the significance of high self-esteem until one day I woke up and realized I was actually wrong. The pursuit of self-esteem can be truly harmful and dangerous. Let me explain. When I first started teaching self-esteem, I taught that it was built or predicated upon three things. One, how significant do you feel? Two, how capable do you feel? And three, to what extent do you like yourself? How much do you actually like yourself? Today though, self-esteem has changed. For you to hold yourself in high estimation, to hold yourself in high regard, you can only get there by constantly comparing yourself to other people. In other words, for you to have high self-esteem, you have to measure yourself against everyone else. You have to constantly compare yourself and you have to be better off than other people. So today, for you to have high self-esteem, you have to constantly compare and say, am I driving the right car? Do I have the right body? Am I the right age? Do I live in the right place? Do I have the right type of house? Do I have the right career? How do my children look? How does my partner look? Am I hot enough? Am I young enough? Am I sexy enough? Am I rich enough? Am I beautiful enough? Etc. And what happens is, because you're constantly comparing yourself to what society has created as the standard, as the measurement for high self-esteem, you'll constantly feel bad about yourself. Why? Because you can never achieve that standard. Number one, you can't achieve it. Number two, it's constantly changing. What we thought was hot and sexy and beautiful 10, 20 years ago isn't what we think today. It's constantly evolving and changing, so therefore it's like a moving target. It doesn't stay in one place. So if you're constantly comparing yourself to other people, you'll never feel good enough about yourself. And what about if today you achieve everything you believe society expects of you and you go, wow, I have high self-esteem, but tomorrow it changes or you change. You can't be what society expects you to be every single day and constantly, apart from the fact that society expects you to be perfect. So what is the solution? If the pursuit of self-esteem is dangerous, then what is a better approach? Ultimately, we all want to feel good about ourselves. So how do we get there? I teach self-compassion. Compassion is the desire to relieve someone else's pain. In other words, you feel someone else's pain and then you want to relieve it. So how does that pertain to you and yourself? We all make mistakes. We're all imperfect. We all do wrong things. We're constantly learning. We're constantly growing. And hopefully we're constantly evolving for the better. When you make a mistake, can you forgive yourself? Can you learn from the mistake? Can you say to yourself, it's okay, tomorrow I'll do better? When you wake up and realize and recognize, oh, I'm not perfect. I'm a human being. Can you actually accept yourself? Can you forgive yourself for being human? The point is you'll never measure up to what society expects of you. However, what you can do is learn to accept yourself. Identify your strengths. Identify your limitations. Build on your strengths. And then find out what you're really good at and focus on that. Pursue your dream Focus on what you're best at, develop those skills and abilities and put aside the measurement that society has or the expectation of perfection that society has for you. Because if you constantly try to compare yourself to other people, you'll never be able to have high self-esteem. So the paradox is if you want to hold yourself in high regard, you have to put aside the expectations and perfections of society and accept that you're flawed. You're a human being. You're going to make mistakes. And then when you feel bad, if there's a day you feel down, you don't turn on the TV or the Internet that says you're supposed to be happy 24 hours a day. You accept that there's a huge spectrum of, of emotions, human emotions, 336 emotions at least. Sometimes you're going to feel deep pain. Sometimes you're going to feel deep joy. Can you be in the middle? And when you experience that deep pain, can you be gentle on yourself? Can you forgive yourself for the mistakes you made? Can you forgive yourself for the wrong things you did? Because the better you treat yourself, the better you'll also treat other people. And in turn, they'll also treat you better. Because remember this, finally, every relationship begins with you. The more that you can naturally like and accept yourself and approve of yourself, 
the easier it'll be to have relationships with other people because you won't be desperately seeking their acceptance, approval or validation. If you'd like to learn more about self-compassion and how to actually build yourself up, go to my website, patrickwannis.com.